Blessed love family, give thanks to the life giver and the keep of life, Emperor Haile Selassie the first. Give thanks for your presence with us even at this moment. And you know, going into the chalice talk, we are definitely celebrating the Earth Day of the Honorable Empress Menin at this hour, being the 25th day of March. And of course, we are speaking from 1891. I know some people do celebrate it on the 2nd of April, but it's all right. When the 2nd of April come around, we will continue to celebrate. It's OK. And remember, there's a lot of astronomical alignments as it relates to the Earth Day of Empress Menin you know, program we have done um, about two years ago where we highlighted that in, in detail. So for sure, you could definitely revisit our archives right here on the YouTube the YouTube channel and definitely see that video that we did a few years ago. But I'm telling you, family, we have a wonderful sit down for you um, this evening here. As I said, our official chalice talk going into the Sabbath day. And we give thanks for such a day of rest and tranquility. And of course, I'm very thankful as well for our international spring equinox, which has just passed forward. Looking forward for you joining us in June. Yes, in June, we're doing the summer solstice in June. So I'm looking forward to your presence. But, you know, at the ceiling of this program, I think I'll give you some more information as it relates to that. Now, remember, family, this is the chalice talk. I think you have an idea of how we do chalice talk. You know, we definitely partake of the tree of life. We have the chalice here running the shot chunk tonight. Definitely remember you could get your chalices specifically. R7 Designs has all the top chalices for you. And for sure, you could even check us on our website. All the link is in the description below this video. All you have to do is link to priestisaacinstitute.com. That is the website, priestisaacinstitute.com. And when you go to the shop area, and you scroll down, you'll see where you could definitely press the link and go straight to the, the, the link to get all your chalwa, your chalices, well designed, red, gold, and green, red, black, and green, or whatever have you, even your picture on it, the Honorable Prophet Jad Daniel definitely has such powers and ability to do such. But anyway, family, I have a wonderful discussion I want to get into this evening, eh? I want to highlight a scripture in Daniel where it says all the thrones were cast down in the ancient of days did sit eh? But of course, I need to go into a little mess here. So what I'm going to do, I am just going to crave your indulgence, family. And, um, you know, we usually have a meditational moment. And in the meditational moment, what we usually do is to listen to something that will edify, edify us and inspire us while we take a drop. I know you have your chalices there. This is why it's called chalice talk. Usually when you see me come, we done blaze the chalice and then we come to you. Eh? But when it comes to chalice talk, we sit and we blaze the chalice while we elevate and then we you know, spit the heavens out so you could understand what's going on here. So what I'm going to do here, as you could have, uh, you already see, we are also highlighting our international homeschool classes, specifically family. Um, this is a, uh, a, a section here of the moon, um, Saturn's moon, Enceladus. Family, when your youths become a part of this international homeschool, and you'll be surprised the amount of information that they learn. But anyway, I'm not going to spend too much time on that. In fact, what I'm going to do for our meditation, we're going to have a, a, a short interview I did with a good sister who has her young ones in the international homeschool program. We don't often you know, run these testimonies, but I said that we would do it today. So get your chalices ready. We have a deep discussion to go into tonight, family. Please make sure you check this reasoning out to the very end. We're going to be going into some deep understanding as it relates to Haile Selassie and the kingdoms of the earth and Daniel chapter seven. Trust me, you don't want to miss this one here. Holy Emmanuel I, Selassie I, Ja, Rastafari, give thanks for the life given and the keep of life. For the most high, bless us as we partake of the tree of life in his mighty and terrible name, the holy three in one and one in three, prophet, priest, and king. Holy Emmanuel I, Selassie I, Ja, 
that's the fire, right? Bless the Lord. This one is going to be heavy. <laughs> Haile Selassie and the kings of the earth. Yeah, man, trust me. And yes, blessed love family, we give thanks. We have Sister Akia here with us, and she is one of our blessed patrons as it relates to the International Home School um, program herself and her wonderful child, her wonderful daughter. Sister Akia, blessed love. Blessed love, honorable. Oh, give thanks. I would just like to ask you, since you have been partaking of the International Home School, yourself and the young one now for some days and a few classes has gone through, what do you think thus far of the International Home School uh, program? I believe it's the best investment I could have made um, for my daughter and for myself as well because learning um, astronomy and um, African heritage, it, it, it was needed, it was much needed. And, and um, uh, the classes are very, very rich. So it takes us some time to actually learn everything. And when we, when we, uh, when we look at, when we watch, um, videos on the same subjects uh, we understand better and we also appreciate uh, the music uh, the jumbo buena songs the songs with the countries um, it's the best investment i could have made for my daughter's education so i am very grateful for that i, I really appreciate that you know um this is not something rehearsed and i must say that has touched my heart very deeply so the young princess herself, um, so how, how, how would you um, assess your observation, you know, of her, you know, um, connection to the videos? Because it's me and the young prince and princess, as you would know, and the princess teaching her Swahili, and we do what we have to do. And um, how, how would you say she has adapted to it thus far? she really enjoys it and looking she's actually looking forward to the classes mm -hmm. and she, the fact that your children are also interacting uh, in the classes um it's um it's uh, how would i say i guess she's enjoying it even more and and she's actually when we go out or when we see some information on in books or on tv mm -hmm. yes. she will always tell me oh yes we 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 learned that with priest isaac or oh, mommy are we going to do priest isaac today so of course. yes she, she yeah. loves it and what num what number are you in the class what number um, have you reached lesson approximately um You're in the 20s, i believe we reached, we reached no we have we haven't reached so far we reached oh. up to class 11 because oh. um we have to take because okay uh she doesn't she speaks english but mm. uh, our first language is french Obviously. so we actually use the classes to to work on her writing and reading um skills as well so this is why i, I said this was one of the best investment i could have made yes, for her yes. That, that's wonderful i appreciate that and because class 11 i mean you have some dynamic classes coming up eh? um when we're okay. going to take trips basically to kemet and and wow. really and really go in the sky and go to space so you have some more interactive classes coming up and of course some live okay. classes with us so um yeah you're at the early stages and i will say for sure it will get better you know so so wow. <laughs> The next question I ask, or the last question, really, um, I think I already know the answer. But what would you recommend, uh, or would you recommend the program to a parent out there, you know, who has children and and would want them to be more inclined, you know, inclined with their African heritage and, of course, astronomy. Of course, of course, I would, because for me, so. as I said, it's the best investment and. And your teaching style actually um, 
is good for, sorry, because English is not my first language, so I'm looking for my words, but your teaching uh, style. All oh, right, um, give thanks. You know, you know, I wouldn't go anymore. Give thanks for Sister Akia for that testimony, you know, and even when I did that interview with her, you know, it was so touching. Sister Akia, blessed love to you. And, you know, I don't know if you have, if you, Sister Akia specifically, and the wonderful family. I don't know if you are a part of um, the biology aspect of our homeschool as yet, you know, but if not my good sister, um, yourself and the little princess, for sure, I would definitely love you to be a part of the biology classes as well. So definitely at no charge to you, my good sister, I will definitely just contact us. And um, if you have not already enrolled in the biology, but if you have, well, don't worry, we will still find another way to show our full appreciation for you and your whole family. And, you know, because of the appreciation that you have showed for us, sister here, there. So, as I said, just contact us. You know, we are family. And for sure, I'm just not too sure we, as the records go, if you already enrolled for the biology aspect of the homeschool. But if not, I'm telling you at no cost to you, I will definitely have you enrolled in the, the biology aspect. Family, let me just take one more draw. Let's hear the rest of what Sister Akia It's good for there. all ages, you know? Even small children, as you as you mentioned it in, during the classes, small children to bigger children will actually learn from the videos. My daughter is seven and she's learning a lot. And I know that next year I will rerun the, the program again for her. Mm -hmm. And I know she will get more from what she's already getting now, which is quite a lot. So as I said, I'm very grateful to, to have uh, to be part of this of of the of your homeschooling program so give thanks oh sister akia i'm very thankful and i really would like to show appreciation for you even patronizing us and i'm honored beyond um anything else trust me i'm honored that i could have touched you know the heartstring of your family that you could at least yes give thanks blessed love as well all right Give thanks, family. What I want us to do, go straight into the reasoning. Let's check out the book of Daniel, chapter 7. Now, this is, we're looking at the King James Version, Daniel, chapter 7. I actually want to start to read right here. And I'm not going to take long at all. We're going to go through this as swiftly as possible. Give thanks for being patient with me to take the two draws, to take this to another level. All right. And it says here, and again, give thanks to Sister Akia, pardon me. And listen, if you do not know, by the way, you can definitely contact us via our email. Eh? I didn't even tell you all of that. This is our, our email, Priest Isaac Institute at gmail.com. You could WhatsApp us or call us as well for more information. This is the Institute phone number. And of course, remember the area code. And you could also visit our website, precisekinstitute.com. And what happens here, you could definitely, you know, let us know that you want to be a part of the International Hope Group program, or you could even get a, a, a free sneak preview of the program. So whatever the case is, just contact us and we definitely take it from there. So the book of Daniel says here, the ninth verse of the seventh chapter. And I beheld till the thrones were cast down. Now, this is actually the subject area we spoke of previous night on the tiger's nest on Radio Anu. I beheld till the thrones were cast down. And the ancient of days did sit, whose garment was as white as snow, and the hair on his head like the pure wool. 
His throne was like the fiery flame and his wheels as burning uh, fire. A fiery stream issued and came uh, forth from before him. Thousand thousands, check that number there. Thousand thousands ministered unto him and 10,000 times 10,000 stood before him. The judgment was set and the books were opened. And I beheld then because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake. And I beheld even till the beast was slain and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. As concerning the rest of the beasts, <laughs> they had their dominion taken away. Yet their lives were prolonged for a season and time. Okay, now basically that's it. Well. Of course, it goes on to say, and I saw in the night vision, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came unto the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. And there was given unto him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, language should serve him. His dominion is an ever-living dominion. Um, it says everlasting. We say ever-living dominion. Nothing, you know, lasts. Which shall not pass away, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. Okay, now, what I'm highlighting here, so the ancient of days, this subject area is a subject area we would have covered already, not too, too long ago, maybe two months ago, as it relates to who is the ancient of days and Haile Selassie being the ancient of days, according to this scripture here. Maybe because of your religious um your religious affiliation, you may disagree. I don't want to try to prove that now. You see, the thing is, this is why we say this is like a university setting, you know, because we would have definitely taken the time uh, to do a whole episode directly dealing with the book of Daniel chapter seven and the book of Daniel chapter two. And uh, we would have highlighted with clarity that Emperor Haile Selassie the first would have fit that standard of the ancient of days. Now, of course, those who understand the divinity of Haile Selassie the first would not have any problem with that, I am sure. Okay, now, what I'm saying is that I started to read from verse nine, which began by saying, I beheld till the thrones were cast down. Anytime I read that, I just think of some big golden chairs like, like falling out the sky, you know, that kind of way. Like you're watching a heap of golden chairs. Well, I mean, it's, it's not that, but that could be a good symbolic way to express it because I beheld until the thrones were cast down, all right? And the ancient of days did sit. That's, that's like the real vibration there. Now, to get a better understanding of what is taking place here, we have to look at the book of Daniel 7, same book, same book, and the eight verses prior to the ninth verse that we began with. Now, basically, and again, we're not going to spend too much time on this uh, because we would have done a video recently as it relates to this. Uh, I think it would have been entitled Haile Selassie being the agent of days, something of the sort. You just check our 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 our, our um, YouTube platform, and you could find that. Now, basically, the book of Daniel chapter two and the book of Daniel chapter seven. Many who may be religiously inclined, as it relates to especially Christianity on that level, would not have any problem following or even agreeing with what I'm saying here. Basically what it is, the book of Daniel has a prophecy that is quite aligned to history itself. So again, we begin with Babylon. Now, Babylon, the ancient kingdom of Babylon, it is just that, a kingdom. And the history shows, and you could see the information here, the history shows that in 539 BC, that came to an end, the whole kingdom of Babylon. And it was taken over at that time by the Medo-Persian kingdom. 
and then now in 331 BC or BCE, the Medo-Persian kingdom came to its demise and it was taken over by the kingdom of Greece. This middle, this middle passage here, this is all history. This is, no, this is not Bible, this is not religion, this is not theology, and it's not Christianity. It is just history. So Greece now, Alexander the Greek and all of that, took over uh, the Medo-Persian kingdom uh, uh, and, and it ruled basically the, the world in a sense, the known world as they like to call it <laughs> until about 168 BCE when, when Rome, the Rome that we know as Rome of ancient time, the same Rome that is said to have crucified Christ, etc., rose up and that became, well, Rome. Rome. Let's just leave it at that. All right. And then, of course, it came into from about 476. The, the euro that we not necessarily know of today, but the division of Europe we know of today to some degree, but the Europe that would have just passed on about 60, 70, 80 years ago, 90, 100, 110 years ago. I want to explain. Remember, we're talking about, I beheld till the thrones were cast down. Just keep that in mind. And the agent of days did sit. So just quickly, family. So what you're seeing on this side, this is Daniel's vision. And on this side, and Daniel chapter two, you have Nebuchadnezzar's dream. Now, Nebuchadnezzar's dream was that of the statue of a man. The man had the head of gold. The man had the chest and, and the arm of silver. And the man had the, the belly and thighs of brass. And then he had the legs of iron and feet of clay and iron. Now, that's basically five different parts. But mystically, the feet is, is a mixture of the fourth part, iron and clay. Good. Now, Daniel had a vision of not five, but four beasts. And he, he, he um, visioned a, a lion with wings. And then he also visioned a bear, uh, which was going up on one side, as you see here, had three ribs in his mouth and came and destroyed this lion. And then the bear now, after destroying the lion, a leopard with four heads came. This is Daniel's vision in Daniel chapter seven. A leopard with four heads came and this leopard ravished this bear and took over the bear. Must remember the leopard also had four wings, four head and four wings. And then after the leopard came this beast, which is not even given a proper description. It's not an orangutan. It's not a zebra. It's not a um, porpoise. It's not a, you know, I mean, uh, 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 jellyfish. It's just considered a beast according to the Bible. So you could see that's a serious beast and this one had 10 horns and teeth of iron and all of that so you see the iron come into play because the beast the beast itself represents the leg of iron and also the feet of clay and iron so let's look at this now because the bible clearly says that and this is a very unique prophecy the, the prophecy of daniel i'm telling you it's a very precise prophecy very precise as far as i see because the, 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 the trick is, when Daniel um, interpreted the dream for Nebuchadnezzar, he told Nebuchadnezzar, well, you are the head of gold. You, you know that. In the scripture, he said, you are the head of gold. And basically, the rest of the body parts that will follow are the kingdoms that shall rise, you know, after each other, um, you know, one after the other consecutively that's the word i was trying to run check for there okay good so i mean that's a very simple thing to understand and then his vision daniel watch it good in daniel's vision in chapter seven the lion with wings is the same head of gold so it's the same vision you know but different symbolism used that's why i'm telling you things are symbolic look at this the 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 the, the statue of nebuchadnezzar is symbolic and the, the, the vision of Daniel is symbolic, but the two symbols mean one same thing. Good. So the head of gold is the lion with the wings. And that's how it starts, you know. This is very important. That's like the key that the scripture gives you. Here's the key. 
The head of gold and the lion with the wings is Babylon. Okay. And the, 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 the animals and the body parts that shall come after are the kingdoms that shall rise up and defeat each other. Okay. All right. So let's watch it. Babylon, this is history now. 605 to 539 BC. Good. The kingdom of Babylon in Iraq are you talking about? Good. Not Babylon, America, you know, in Iraq. Babylon, the real historical Babylon. All right. And then what happened? Well, even the Bible shows you that Darius the Mede teamed up with Persia and created the Medo-Persian kingdom. And then they came in. So, so that's, that's, as they would say, a no-brainer that the beer has to be the Medo-Persian kingdom. And that's why the beer went up on one side because Persia actually kind of um, um, went above the Medo, uh, the Median kingdom in their relationship and really became the, the, the ruler of the both of the alliance. As I said, we did a whole episode on this, you know, so I don't want to stay too long breaking down all details, but just historically again, Alexander the so-called great, and when he invaded most of the so-called known world at the time, the Medo-Persian kingdom got a blow. And historically, here is Greece until 168 then came in Rome history. So if the prophecy of Daniel is correct, follow this. Babylon is the lion. So the Medo-Persian is the bear. Greece is the leper. The leper had four heads. And it had four wings. So that means it was very swift. The leopard is already swifter than even a lion. The lion had wings. But this one had four wings. Four heads represents the four generals of Alexander the Greek. That when, his, when he died, his kingdom was divided into four. That's it. And then Rome with the ten horns represent the ten kingdoms. Follow this family. Remember that the Rome, ancient Rome, had 10 kingdoms. Remember, in this prophecy, it says that the bees had 10 horns. This is Daniel 7, 10 horns. And then a little horn came up amongst the 10 horns. And this little horn, with its power, because it had power, it had eyes and mouth speaking blasphemy, so it's a power machine. And it plucked up three of the horns. All right, it is obvious, family. This is why I say that this Daniel business here is on point. I don't know how you get around that one. You would have to say, well, they write Daniel to they write Daniel to fit history and then bring it to you after. Hmm. I know a lot of things in history is not the real history. But I know the book of Daniel has been around enough. Yeah, you may say it's been around 3,000 years, 2,000 years, even 500 years. But I know for sure that a lot of the prophecies that have been fulfilled here, especially in the latter part, when we get to the agent of days, the agent of days himself was reading the book of Daniel. This Daniel prophecy is very precise to me. Because history again, not Bible, not belief, not religion, says Rome had 10 kingdoms. And um, in the fifth century, the king of Rome gave power, the power unto the Pope of Rome. So when the king, uh, uh, the emperor Justinian gave power unto the, the, the Pope of Rome, in a sense, making him the king, all the kingdoms wasn't too pleased with that. The Astrogoths, the Herolees, the Vandals, that's why they call people Vandals when they go and they decimate places and go on with a thing. Yeah, these three kingdoms were destroyed by the Papasal, the Papacy, pardon me, the Papal, the Papacy, which is the Pope, which is the church, because the power was given unto the church by the state. You know, some people equate that with the revelation that says, the 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 uh, I think it's the dragon gave power unto the beast. I think this is Revelation three, one of these thereabouts, but it's all connected and similar, you know. So 
I'm saying now this is history. When, when, when we say these three kingdoms, they were kingdoms, they were kingdoms that were destroyed because Rome uh, at that time, which is really Europe of today, was known for its kingdoms. It was, and the Vikings and all them people here, they considered themselves empires, kingdoms, and what became known as um, principalities. This is very important, you know, what are we talking about in this chalice talk? <laughs> uh, I beheld till the thrones were cast down and the ancient of days did sit. So what we talking about here now is Daniel chapter seven, verse one to eight. Daniel chapter seven, verse nine is the, is the verse that says, I beheld until the thrones were cast down. But we didn't reach there yet. We're showing you where the thrones come from first. How they got thrones, who sit on them thrones here. So this is, this is the history that leads to the 10 horns, the 10 horns on the beast that destroyed the leopard with the forehead, which must be Greece. The 10 horns on that beast are the 10 kingdoms of Rome. And the three that were plucked up by the little horn were the three that were destroyed by the papacy when they were given power. And these three horns, which are the, the three kingdoms didn't want to go under no rulership by no church. Well, no problem. We just run a, 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 a carob and arrow ox on you. You know, what I mean? <laughs> these are people that you can't find today or hardly find them. Extinct genocide, it is called. That's what happened, really. Them people, terrible, you know. Yeah, man. So now, hear me. What I'm saying here, remember that this. The story didn't just end here for the, the statue. So the statue, the legs of iron is the same beast. But if you notice, this have an extra component. There are four beasts, but there are five different aspects of the body part because the feet now is of iron, just like the legs, because it's the same role, but it mixed with clay. So the feet, which is modern day Europe, is iron mixed with clay. Because remember, if you're going to Rome today, you're going to the capital of Italy. Now, Italy is not the capital of Rome. You know. Rome is the capital of Italy. But Italy is just one of the kingdoms that came from ancient Rome. Ancient Rome capital was all in Turkey. And then you have by, by, Byzantine Rome. So, this is a serious thing, but the, the feet now of clay and iron is Rome in a new form. Even though the Vatican is in Rome in Italy. It's, it's like, you know, I don't want to compare it in that way, but you know, you had the kingdom of Ghana. Ghana today, little Ghana there, well, big Ghana still, but in comparison to the kingdom of Ghana, you know, it's not exactly the exact same thing. Good. All right. So this is why now, you know, family, you would have had different kingdoms in, in Rome, or I should say, hear me say in our uh, in Europe. And uh, an understanding of the history, eh? if you notice what we're going to get into, and I'm not going to spend too much time on it, eh? just tiger with me for a few more um, um, a few more moments <laughs> as such, you know. For example, the when we hear of the monarchy, eh? like for example, just the other day, um, Prince William and, um, and the Duchess came through the Caribbean. I think they run them, where they run them from? It's Brazil or Belize. One of these places had to run them out. And they went to, to uh, they went to Jamaica. William said that he's sorry for, uh, what do you say, sorry or it was sorrowful. It's something he was saying about slavery and trying to apologize. Well, I wouldn't say apologize. I don't think no apology came. Honestly, I didn't hear it, you know. I just heard the news speak about it. But anyway, um, he being the grandson 
of, is it the, yes, of Queen Elizabeth II, who, if I'm correct, the great granddaughter of Queen Victoria, you know, we need to understand, and we were speaking about this previous night on the Tiger's Nest on radio, and that World War I was primarily a war of kingdoms, but a war amongst cousins. This is a serious thing. Sometimes we we talk and we, you know, do things and say things, but we are not too clear with what is really happening here. You know? Queen Victoria, the Queen of England, Great Britain, the Empire of Britain at that time, we should say, because she would have been considered the Empress of India. When you're a king in England, you're the Emperor of India. And um, during that, that colonial aspect of India. So anyway, herself and her consort, Albert, and the children that they would have born to the earth, that would be about nine of them. She would have taken her sons and daughters and married them off into other European kingdoms and nobility and aristocrat and all of that stuff. And, and not just aristocrat, not just nobility, but the monarchs. That's the whole idea to forge some level of relationship. And here it is. In many of the cases, they were already related because you must keep in mind, Victoria and her team are Germans. That is why they changed the name to the house of Windsor, from the house of uh, what is it? Uh, Goth Gothot. Uh, I, 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 it slips me. The original um, name that the the British monarch would carry, but it's a German name. But because they want to sever themselves from any German affiliation, that's why they did that. But there's always been that love hate relationship between the British and the German and. Europe and the German and all of that stuff and bring black people into their, their misery and their mix up. So what I'm saying here is that she would have married her, her first daughter off to the German nobility. And um, she would have been, who, who was that daughter there? That's Vicky? Yeah. Vicky. And so Princess Vicky would have married Prince Wilhelm, it would be at the time, who became the, the uh, what do you call him in Germany? The Kaiser of Germany, uh, eventually. No, 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 no. She, she married his father, and eventually he was born. And they say that he did not really have a, a love for, for, for England at all, even though his mother was British, and he eventually became the, the ruler of Germany and was very hostile against the, the British people, or so it would appear. But those of us who understand that people, that, that these wars that you see happen across the earth, they usually plot. They, they, I mean, you have to see the script. It's like something taking place on stage. That's why they call it the theater of war. You have big money oligarchies that sponsor both sides of the war just to cash in. And, and companies and what you call it, countries go to these same people to borrow money so they can go to these companies that make the war material so they can buy tanks and jet planes and the people that make the war material and machinery is the same people you're borrowing the money from. You know, it's a very dastly sort of operation that takes place on the planet. So in reality, these two fellas here, one of these fellas, I think, is this one, is Nicholas II, the king of Russia. So he's the, the czar of Russia. And the other fella is not his brother, although they look so much alike. That's his cousin. That is um, George V, who would be the son of Edward 
the seventh, which is the son of Queen Victoria. So Mr. Nicholas II of the Roman, what do you call these people here? From the Russian royal family, the Rom Romanov, 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 the Romanov family, but yet still related to the British no nobility. And uh, this fella here, Nicholas now, he married his cousin, which is Alexandria, which is Victoria's granddaughter. And she sent her granddaughter to Russia to marry him. And um, she became the wife of um, who would have eventually become the Tsar of Russia. He and his same wife, the same Victorian granddaughter, and their four daughters and his little son, the fifth child, his little son, all of them got shot up and killed. Dead by the revolution uh, that, that, that rose up, the Russian revolution that overthrew that kingdom there. In fact, the, the, the Biz, uh, Bismarck, uh, Kaiser Wilhelm II, he himself, all of this is during World War I, by the way. He himself, after being defeated, although he, he, was, he went into exile in, I think it was Poland, or no, the Netherlands, he lived a, a, a quite a lengthy life, they said, under good circumstances, but I think he was very senile in the very end and he would just curse Victoria day and night and <laughs> the British um, continually. So, but what I'm saying family here, what I'm trying to highlight, in terms of the agent of days, what I'm trying to highlight here, just giving you an idea. So, so World War I was a family feud, not even just a European war, you know, a family feud. which apparently showed the British monarchy coming out on top. I want the family to follow us uh, this evening. As you can see, we're going to get into some real vibration here. So if you look at this family picture here, this is Victoria here. This is the same Wilhelm here. Um, I, I don't know them, you know, they're not my people, but uh, I think this one is the Edward the Seventh here. And Nicholas II and George the, 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 the fifth should be somewhere here as well, because Wilhelm II would be somewhat older than his cousins, um, George V and the Tsar Nicholas II, you know. Okay, good. Follow me, good, with all understanding, because at that time there was a strong link, obviously, between the kingdom of Britain and the kingdom of, um, yes, the kingdom of Britain and the kingdom of Russia. Okay, family, this is what I want us to do. This is from the website unofficialroyalty.com, unofficialroyalty.com. And it's going to be speaking of the European monarchs at the start of World War I in 1914. Okay, let us just run through this. And you have the Principality of Albania. And of course, a principality now is when it's ruled by a prince. Um, and you have um, Wilhelm the Weird, weird the Weird, sovereign prince of Albania. And it shows when he reigned in 1914. Uh, you have the Austrian-Hungarian Empire, and uh, that's, of course, emperor. So you have Franz Joseph, emperor of Austria and king of Hungary, and you reign until 1916 there. And uh, you have the kingdom of Belgium, and this one is a current monarchy. Let's keep that in mind. Very, very important. This is the time of World War I, by the way. And then you have the kingdom of Bulgaria, and that was under Ferdinand I, the Tsar of Bulgaria. 
Um, you see when he reigned, 1887, 1918, you have Christian X, uh, king of Denmark, and he reigned from 1912 to 1947. And then you have the German Empire, of course, and there is Wilhelm, the German emperor, also king of Prussia. Uh, they give you an idea of that region here. Then the, the German kingdoms also was divided as well. You have, um, you have um, uh, Bavaria, you have um, Ludwig III, he was the king of Bavaria. Uh, you have Saxony, you have, uh, how you pronounce it, Frederick uh, Augustus III, he was the king of Saxony. And then you have War Tem Timberg, Wilhelm II, he was the king of that place there. And then you, I think it's pronounced War Temberg, but yes. Then you have Baden, uh, Friedrich the II, Grand Duke of Baden. You see when he's reigning, then you have Hesse and and um, um, what they call the Rhine and by Rhine, uh, Ernest Ludwig, and he was the Grand Duke of Hesse. And then you have uh, Mecklenburg and, 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 and blah, 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 blah. Frederick again, France. Okay, so I mean, we can go down. I'm not going to read everybody here. This is another place. You have the, he's the Duke of Oldenburg. And then you have the Grand Duke of, of Saxon when and that goes on and on and on. And then after we come out of that nobility there, because as I said, you have many principalities. This is a principality that still exists. This is Lee, Lee uh, Chittenstein that is still up to this day a uh, principality that exists. That's um, Johann II at the time of the World War that is, and he is the prince of such. Um, uh, another current monarchy is the Grand Duchy of um, Luxembourg. And at the time you had Maria Adelaide Adé, and she was the Grand Duchess. You have the Kingdom of Montenegro, and you have Nikolai I, the King of Montenegro. Um, um, you have Wil Wilhelmina, and she is the from the Kingdom of the ne Netherlands, the Kingdom of Norway. These are kingdom still around. Of course, the Ottoman Empire, the Kingdom of Romania, uh, um, the, the, the Russian Empire, of course. You have Nicholas there, the Kingdom of Serbia, uh, the Kingdom of Spain, the Kingdom of Sweden, and of course, you have Great Britain there. Now, there, of course, I skipped out many. Look at all of these different kingdoms. These are all kingdoms, primarily European kingdoms during the time of World War I. Now, as we went through, we came across at least five of them that are considered current monarchs, of course, including the British monarchy. Now, this is very important. What we have noticed between World War I and World War II, follow me family, what we have noticed on the world scene between World War I and World War II is the falling or the, the destruction or the total lockdown of empires, kingdoms, and even principalities. Even the Shah of Iran, when, when um, um, Ayatollah Khomeini returned and he was overthrown. So of course, coming into the 1900s, Europe was totally kingdoms. There was hardly a spot in Europe that was not a kingdom with a king, with an emperor, or at least with a principality. That is what Europe was about. They were even mixing bloodlines to see how they can make the thing work. But you see, and where did these kingdoms come from? Where did these kingdoms come from? Where did they derive from? Well, as I said before, no, no, we're not going to the Bible yet. We're looking at history. As I said before, these kingdoms, 
Europe itself had that tradition of kingdoms. That's just reality. That's why we have the history of the 10 kingdoms, which became the European countries that we know today, of obviously with different divisions. All right, because there are more than 10 you know, European countries with different divisions. Follow me, good family. But well, let's look at the scripture again. We're talking about the beast with the 10 horns. We're talking about the beast that conquered the leopard, which is Rome conquering Greece, the same leopard that conquered the bear, which is the Medo Persian kingdom, which conquered the land with wings, which is Babylon. This is clear. So that pattern there leads us to the European kingdoms that we know of in history. In the Bible, it says the story that we are highlighted with the bear and the lion and and, and the leopard with the four heads. That is the same story that says in verse nine, I beheld till the thrones were cast down. Which thrones? The thrones that were the product of the story prior to verse nine. What's the story prior to verse nine? The lion with wings. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Right. The bear with the, the, the rib in his mouth. Yes, yes. And the leopard with the four heads. Right. And then the beast with the ten horns. The ten kingdoms, I hear you. The kingdoms of Rome, you are correct. And that has become the kingdoms of Rome that we know in modern history. You're right, you're right. For example, the Tsar of Russia. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What became of him? His kingdom fell. And, and we're talking about the, 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 the uh, uh, Kaiser of Germany, right, right. What become of him? He, yes, that, that came to an end too. Okay, okay. And, and, and even the Shah of Iran, right. What became of him? Yeah, I think he gone as well. You know. Okay, and we can say the same for most of the other Europe, European and other kingdoms that were there. At the time, okay, World War I and World War II. So I'm saying that the demolishing of all of these empires, kingdoms, and principalities, I am saying that that is the fulfillment of this prophecy now that says, and I beheld till the thrones were cast out. But interestingly, after the thrones were cast down, the ancient of days did sit. And he is described his garments white as snow here, and his head like pure wool, and his throne like fiery, fiery flame, and the wheels of burning fire, etc., etc. But we have to keep in mind you know, Haile Selassie the first is not a passive. Uh, participant in all what I'm speaking of here. Remember when we did the program, specifically speaking of Daniel 2 and 7, we showed that the rock that was formed out of the mountain without hands like Lalibela, that hit, remember what the, what the rock did? The rock hit the feet of clay and iron. That's what the rock did. The rock is highly Selassie. The stone that formed out of the mountain, according to Daniel's um, chapter two, the vision of Nebuchadnezzar, that stone came and hit the feet. And when it hit the feet, the whole statue crumbled. You see, when Haile Selassie, when Mussolini troubled Ethiopia, right? And Haile Selassie even had to go to the League of Nations to plead for the people. Not going into no details, because I know we know exactly what that's about. And we understand, obviously, if you watch a mentor, you understand the importance of that tradition, the underworld where the emperor went to, to and literally carried, like Atlas, the world on his back. But you see that whole troubling the black man king, we sing a bingy like that, what make you trouble the black man king? You see, at the end of that war, by the time that war was done in Ethiopia, regained it's, it's uh, sovereignty in such 
according to the, the League of Nations, that there was the one that said they annexed it to, to Italy. Although the, the warriors were at home standing up strong. But when the emperor returned to Ethiopia, by that time, eh, enough kingdoms fell. A lot of these kings and empires and principalities fell. There was a reason for all of this. Because you see, after World War I going into World War II, there was a lot of revolution and uprising as well. Plus the war would have driven out some of these kingship. So when you read the whole list of kingship there that you saw during the World War I and II, and now when you look, there are only a few of them. Well, you may say to yourself, but listen, Ras, okay, I understand what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Because I understand how highly Selassie played a part in the World War. Yeah, man, and it's true that this him, World War II began. You're right, you're right. Because he said that. He said that. The, the match that strike in Ethiopia shall burn through Europe. You're right. And it's true that World War I began, um, World War II, pardon me, and the League of Nations came to an end. I totally agree. All right. But look, Britain's still there. You know, and as you just say, Ras, you just said that a while ago. What I just say? You just say that at least four or five of that long list is still current monarch up to now. So, so when Revelation, when Daniel say he beheld until all the thrones were cast down, it can't be that. Well, you see, that's the mistake. Because we just chanted like that. I beheld till all the thrones. But Daniel didn't say all the thrones. What would he said? I beheld till the thrones were cast out. And the ancient of days did sit. And listen to this. Eh? Verse 11 says, listen to this. And I beheld even till the beast was slain. And his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. As concerning the rest of the beasts with an S, as concerning the rest of the beasts, their dominion, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives prolonged for a season and time. So to me, you know, it's almost like an example I like to use when the supermarket is closed, you know, when you go inside the supermarket and it closes at nine and nine o'clock hit you in the supermarket, you hear them say, well, you know, the supermarket is about to close. Please collect your last few goods and whatever. And get out. We need to go home now. Body needs to sleep. And uh, <laughs> I hope they don't say that. But the thing is now you actually, the supermarket closed, you know, but it's still conducting business. Now the people that come there can't get in. Not unless you know the security and you say, okay, hurry up, hurry up. But outside of that, you can't come in the supermarket because it closed. But business still taking place inside the supermarket, but just for a few more minutes. The last few people in there picking up their goods, the last few checkouts, people still coming out, the door open, you're trying to get it. No, this is so he can come out. The security at the door now, no more opening because of the sensor, because the supermarket closed. So you see, when the emperor come and give that judgment to the urchin, trust me, man, the supermarket closed, you know, but you see, we're not aware of this. Especially some of us as Ras, we done give up already. This is like when Moses went into the mountains to get the commandments, we done give up already. Oh, he like he not coming back. Even when the emperor went into so-called exile, enough ones give up already. Oh, well, he ain't coming back again and he come again. I always tell Rasim, don't be quick to chuck no foolishness because none of you can prove that the king is dead. You understand? Yeah. So, so the point is that Daniel clearly says that, hey, them, them lions here, the beasts, they ain't got no teeth in them out. None of them have no teeth in them out you know, up to now. Even the huff and puff that they run in the world. Remember, they run the media too. Now. They can be poor and tell you they're rich and you believe it, you know. They ain't got no teeth in them out. Toothless tigers, as they call them. They ain't got no teeth in them out. Them lions ain't got no 
no fangs. But the life prolonged a little while. That's all that's going on. That's why we have to know now, hey, from God come amongst us, we have to know is we in charge, you know, but we, we don't understand that. It's the same way like when David, David was anointed king before he became king. He done anointed by God to be king, just waiting for the, the final, you know, the details, even though it took a couple of years well. So King Emmanuel come and bless us and anoint us with the holy order. King Haile Selassie come and trample the beast for us. Marcus Garvey opened the way. Oh, glorify Empress Menin at this hour, her earth day at this hour, the 25th day of March. You know, come and seal that divine feminine energy for all of I and I. So we should be strong and know that we, is come on, listen, it's I and I to take over. You know, it's a spiritual war and a physical war as well. You know, and a, a spiritual and a, a, a spiritual unity and a physical unity even within ourselves. You know. So, without a doubt, the ancient of days that sat after the thrones were cast down is Haile Selassie the first. And the thrones that were cast down is not just a prophetic prophecy or religious jargon. It's an actual historical happenings in the earth specifically during the two world war remember you know they say world war one start in 1914 i'm sure some of you have already you know the signs with the nine and the one is ten and the one and the four is five and five plus ten is 15 and one and five is six world war one okay um they they technically say world war two started in in, in um 1941 i give them that you know that the king himself is who light the fuse and get out of their way still so in 1940 and one world war two one and nine ten and four and one is five and ten and five is 15 and one and five is six you know yeah so 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 now i'm not saying this is world war three and all of that because it's world war this world war thing all of that is media vibes to a degree as soon as World War II done, the Cold War started. As soon as it done it. When has these killers never been at war? <laughs> but anyway, we watch it now. Everyone watching to see if so-called World War III would begin. 2022. Two, two, and two is the next six. That's three, six. I have a line there. If this is the beginning of the infamous World War III that the world has been waiting for for such time, you know. So we give thanks in a man, as I said. You know, I be held until uh, Prussia and Germany and Italy, even Italy eh, had an emperor, Emperor Victor Emmanuel III, the one that they say ruled Ethiopia when the king was in exile. Imagine that. Eh? And, and Mussolini marched up to him, you know, and made him make him prime minister. And then after a while, when Mussolini started to lose favor with the people, Victor Emmanuel pretend he wasn't with Mussolini anymore and they hang Mussolini, but they say, Victor, you got to go to it. We know why I'm okay, you understand? As I said specifically, yeah, clarity, you know, it is clear that that is a fulfillment of the prophecy. And remember, you know, that that Daniel prophecy is one of the, the clearest and precise, most precise prophecy that you see there in the scripture, you know. Now, even, um, I want definitely, I'm sure many would say, but wait, Ross, okay, okay, you're good with that one. You're right, you're right, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. The beasts, some of the beasts, them shall pull out, all right. But what about the Ethiopian empire now? Wait, that one, nigga. <laughs> yeah. Now, as I said, even as Ras, that's why I always say it. it's the same thing they used to say when the king went into exile. The ex-emperor, they used to call the man, you know, man. The ex-emperor. Well, the ex-emperor of Ethiopia was standing inside his sons. That's just their opinion, eh? I don't know if some of you know that the emperor's son, Aswawasan, proclaimed himself emperor Amhasalasi the first, and he was the emperor until he passed in 1997. He was emperor in exile, um, self-proclaimed. Uh, I, I I really don't know how the 
the family, like for example, Ermaya Selassie would look at that. That's a question I would like to put to him to see how he accepts that. Um, most, not most, I would say most, but enough ones as Ras would really ride with that, you know. But we, for me personally, no disrespect to Aswa Wasson, you know. But I'm telling you, Haile Selassie is my emperor. I tell you the truth. You understand? Until you can show me otherwise, which I doubt you can. But anyway, family, give thanks for the life given and the keep of life. Give thanks for the, the Holy Sabbath day. Give thanks for the earth strong of Mother Menin, you know, and give thanks for all joy and happiness. Once again, just encouraging you, family. Make sure you contact us so you can get your free, your free um, international homeschool class viewing. So you and the young ones can sit down and watch a nice class of the International Homeschool so you know for sure exactly what you'll be getting when you order the full package. And remember, family, this is the time for us to definitely edify our own. Eh? You can see what the world is about and when they're ready, they're taking children out of school. And, and even, even if it's, this is not really uh, uh, about taking children out of school. Eh? This is about another level of education, you know? Yeah, this is about enhancing, enhancing the mind of the youth and, and, and nourishing it. We consider that the knowledge that we give is nourishment, rich nourish, nourishment as it relates to the Afrocentricity, biology, and, and even astronomy. Family, give thanks to the love. Give thanks to the life given the keep of life. And remember, definitely, on the Sabbath day, make sure you're in tune to Radio Anu for your sabbatical vibes. Of course, all the link, uh, or links, I should say, are in the description below. Give thanks. Holy Emmanuel, I, Selassie, I, ja, Rastafari, blessed love, give thanks. <laughs>